Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. In the Explain series, I take a sexual health topic and explain it. And this week, it's the turn of epididymal orchitis, otherwise known as EO. Well, what is epididymal orchitis? Uh, epididymal orchitis is inflammation of the epididymis, which is the tube that goes from the testicles up to the prostate. And the orchitis bit is inflammation of the testicles, uh, either one or the other or both. Uh, obviously, if you've got inflammation uh, of around that area, around the testicles, it can be uh, very, very painful and also very, very tender. Uh, in the worst case scenario, it can even be painful just to walk. And epidermal orchitis can actually start quite quickly, or it can also be a grumbling thing that takes days and weeks uh, to really get going. But the direction of travel is it tends to get worse with time. If, this, if you're watching this video and these symptoms explain you, then you need to get to either your family doctor to get reviewed and treated, or ideally a sexual health uh, clinic uh, to be reviewed by a sexual health nurse or doctor. Uh, that way they can uh, investigate you, give you a quick uh, once over and test you as well for, in other words, give you a sexual health screen and, and you'll be tested for chlamydia, gonorrhea, and they'll probably also do a blood test uh, for syphilis and HIV. Uh, they will also examine you um, and they may examine you either just standing up or laying down uh, and they'll fill your groin for lymph nodes, um, uh, examine uh, your right and left testicle um, to find out where exactly it hurts. So if your, your epididymis is at the back of the testicle um, and, if, and so if you're getting pain which is very much at the back of the testicle, uh, then it could very well be your epididymis is uh, inflamed. If the pain is generally all around the testicle itself, then it could be the actual testicle that's inflamed. Okay, that's the orchitis bit of epid epid epididymal orchitis. Um, either way, uh, after the examination, sorry, and during the examination, he'll also examine uh, the penis as well, and you'll be asked to uh, retract the foreskin all the way and then uh, separates uh, uh, the meatus as well. That's basically where the pee comes out. It's colloquially known as the Japs eye. Uh, the doctor or nurse uh, may take a small loop, which is like usually red or white, and a little tiny loop thing at the end, and just pop it on the inside uh, of the penis just to take a sample, just to see if there's any uh, discharge, for example. And then they can look at that under the microscope, and will be able to, that will help with the diagnosis. You'll then be asked to do a urine test and possibly a few swabs depending on uh, what you've been doing sexually. If you've been diagnosed with epididymal orchitis um, and after a sexual health screen you will be given um, a course of antibiotics and it's usually a two-week course um, of a particular type of antibiotics. I'm not going to say which type because quite frankly it changes um, uh, every few years depending on the uh, sensitivities of particular infections. If your boyfriend uh, has been uh, diagnosed with epididymal orchitis, it does not mean he has got a sexually transmitted infection. Around about 30, uh, maybe 40% of all epididymal orchitis infections are actually caused by a sexually transmitted infection. That means 60 to 70% of epididymal orchitis is not caused by a sexually transmitted infection and is caused by some other infection. Obviously during sex there's lots of pushing and shoving and bacteria uh, get pushed into uh, uh, all sorts of different places and all you need is a bit of bacteria that goes into the urethra and, uh, and if it stays there it can track back um, up the penis uh, via the prostate and down uh, into the uh, epididymis uh, or the testicle itself, the orchitis bit. So, uh, how do you prevent epididymal orchitis? Well, um, condoms is a good way. Uh, also, if you do partake in anal sex, um, then I would strongly recommend that you use uh, condoms. Um, the good thing, the good thing about condoms is it's you'll cut down your chances of, of having urethritis and uh, minimise your chances of uh, epididymal orchitis as well. Uh, if you have been diagnosed with uh, epididymal orchitis, <coughs> you will be asked uh, to also use supportive underwear. So if you're using boxes or 
uh, going commando, for example, which is no underwear, uh, then you'll be asked probably by a cheap pair of briefs, uh, something which actually supports the weight of the testicles. Um, the reason for that is, is the epididymis is wrapped in various fibrous tissues called the spermatocord. And obviously, if you've got a, a golf ball and an elastic band, the elastic band gets continually poinged all the time and that can cause further inflammation. So lifting the testicles up and making the elastic band nice and loose uh, gives the time everything time to repair. Um, and that's why you'll be asked to wear briefs. You'll also be asked to not to jog so much. So if you do lots of sports involving running or jogging, you may be asked instead to take up uh, swimming, for example, uh, for the next few weeks, uh, just to, again, give your testicles a bit of a break. That's it for epididymal orchitis. In short, if you've got painful testicles, go and see your doctor and don't delay. Uh, one quick uh, message um, about other things that can occur in the testicles. Um, guys, you should be um, examining your testicles uh, once every uh, few months just to see, first of all, examine them now to see what is what you consider normal. Uh, and then that way you know that if a lump does appear, you know that it is abnormal and you need to get it checked out immediately. Another thing that's also important uh, to get um, <clears throat> uh, to notice with your own body as well is uh, just to make sure uh, that you get regular checkups. Uh, and so if you're having a few sexual partners every so often through the year, you should get checked out at least once a year. If you're having a lot of partners, get yourself uh, checked out uh, every uh, six months. And if you're having a hell of a lot of partners and risky sex, um, then uh, you should be getting yourself checked out every three months. But speak to your doctor about that as well. Okay, so if you want any further information, uh, then you can uh, speak to uh, the British Association of uh, Sexual Health on their website, uh, nhs.choices, um, uh, the CDC, or the Family Planning Association. I hope you found this episode informative and helpful. And if you like this episode, please like it, please share it, and uh, please subscribe as well. Uh, thank you very much, and see you next week. Take care.